I'm Carolina, I'm 15, and this is my dream quince story. I have always wanted a quince. I think it was growing up, like, watching Disney movies, like, where you get the that one scene where the princess gets her ball gown. I kind of wanted to have a moment where I just make people go wow, but I've never really thought that I would actually, like, get one because I was always a bit less social than other people. Most of the time when I talk with people at, at school, they're more of just acquaintances than friends. So it was hard for me to imagine a quince. You know, since I was like younger, I like being alone. I think I'm really grateful that I was given my own space. Over time, I did develop feelings of being lonely and really caused me to kind of go into like a darker type of mentality. But, you know, the people around me are really helping me get out of there. I'd say I have a really good relationship with my parents. They're very understanding and they're open-minded. I was just blessed to have them be my parents. I was really grateful that they were able to make this happen. They would always say that it was worth it just to see me happy. I think my quince really helped with that. You know, I was given a moment where I could just be the center of attention and getting out of my shell. My dress, it was kind of like a pink. Well, I saw purple but people said that it was probably just the lighting and the way that I saw it because it looked pink to them. I'd say finding my dress was kind of difficult because I kind of had an idea in my head of what I wanted it to look like but at the same time I knew I couldn't just go with that one image in my head and I didn't really have anything that they had in my mind when I was picking up my dress but when I saw the dress, nothing else was going to top that for me. I was about to go take photos and I was really excited. I don't really think of myself as photogenic, but you know, the way that they were able to take pictures of me made me feel like I was. It was just really exciting. Chamelanes, like they were all really patient as well. For my core, I just had five chamelanes and my brother was my main chambelan. I didn't really want like a big core and I didn't really know a lot of people either who I wanted to be my chambelanes. They were just like family friends, you know, people that I met when I was younger. During the photos and like having people come up to me and like take photos, it was a little kind of awkward. I don't know, I just, that's not really what I like to do. It was kind of like a thing where I was out of my comfort zone, but it was really nice seeing all of my family members and being able to take photos with them. Walking into my venue, I was really happy with all my decorations. I think it really fit my vintage theme. The person helping with decorations and the centerpieces, they did, I think, an amazing job. Like, my idea had come to life, so it was, it was really a nice feeling walking into my venue. The morning of my quince, I was really nervous. I was kind of thinking, I was like, what if no one shows up? You know, I made my parents kind of like go through all this trouble and no one's showing up. I had invited about like 350 guests. It was quite a big event. There was a lot of people there. I had a live band and I had decided to have one because I would see like that, you know, people really like to get up to dance to those songs the most. So since I wanted people to really enjoy my party, I thought that, you know, like a live band, I enjoy it and everyone else enjoys it. So it's like, it's a win-win. <laughs> We were getting ready to do the entrance and like kind of like start the watch. It was a few minutes before. I had just found out that my choreographer had put the music in a disc 
but the DJ, his computer didn't have like any disc input, so we technically lost the music. I was already overwhelmed, and then my brother comes up to me, and he's like, one of one of our chamelanes, his shoe broke. It was adding more to what I was already feeling. So I felt even more overwhelmed to the point where like, you know, like I kind of broke down. It was not a good time at that moment. I was really worried because I wasn't unsure if we had the right songs. I felt like I was getting even more out of my comfort zone just to deliver a great dance that I wanted to be proud of. And it just felt like it was all just going down the drain. I was about to step onto the plank thing that my chamelanes could lift me up. And I was really nervous because beforehand during the practices, I did end up getting kind of like a panic attack because I was so scared because I do have like a small fear of heights so it was kind of also my way of overcoming that I think the wads overall came out pretty good the timing was different from what we had practiced with so we kind of had to improvise at the end without the music because the music did stop so we had to kind of improvise and kind of like keep going with it but overall i, I was really happy with it I was gonna do the father-daughter dance and I was really excited I'd say I'm really close with my dad so it was like a really special moment for me. While we were dancing, you know, he was like comforting me about what was happening with the music and everything. So it was really emotional for me to be dancing with my dad just because he means so much to me and he was doing his best to make me feel better about everything. Gracias, familia López. Gracias a todos por acompañarnos esta tarde en este día tan especial para mi hija. Más en estos dos últimos años. I'd say my mom's speech made me the most emotional. Yo no sabía si iba a poder estar aquí. We had found out that my mom had a tumor. It was a tumor that they didn't really know if it was gonna go away or not. I was never really sure that my mom was gonna be there at my quince, like physically, because there was always the, the small chance that she was just gonna get worse. <laughs> A week before she had gotten news that she, the tumor that she had, it was like gone, like she was fine now. So having my mom may have a speech and having her there on my special day, it was a feeling of being blessed. For my surprise dance, that's the song that was the most different from what we had practiced to what we actually used the day of. The, my choreographer ended up finding a version of the song. So it was the same song, but it, it was really different to what we were used to. Counting the steps, we had to be more mindful of it. I would get lost and I, like, what do I do now? What part of the song is this? In the end, I guess it, worked out but I'd say that I I do wish the day of like things would have gone different. I had chosen to do a tango and you know at first I thought that it was just gonna be like a dance but talking with my choreographer he really gave me like the idea of 
to make it like theatrical, to make it like kind of like a scene out of a movie. My choreographer kind of told me that while I was dancing, I should have kind of like a story in my head. I'd say that I, the dance kind of made me feel empowered. I was thinking about everything that had happened like before. I was actually like, what happened happened. I'm really happy with the outcome of everything. You know, I was really happy with what the venue looked like. I was happy like in general because I was able to see that people were enjoying themselves. Despite everything that happened, I it definitely was my dream quinceanera. Thanks for listening to my Dream Quince story. Comment down below what was your favorite part. If you want your Quince featured, make sure to email quince at awesomenesstv.com and make sure to subscribe to my Dream Quinceanera. Bye!